All right, so switching from grade harness to her flat collar. Good, good girl. We're gonna do the same thing. We're gonna start off nice and gentle. Good, just here in the driveway. Make sure she understands first. And we can get her entangled. Good. Make sure she understands that it's the same conversation, just a slightly different sensation because now it's her neck. Good. Instead of around her chest that she's feeling the pressure. Good. A little bit. Good job. Good job. All right, so we're a couple minutes in now. Great. Got a shorter leash. Good. And she's doing really well. Still a bit of pulling, but it's really not any more than with the harness. Good. 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 That's good. A little pressure there. Good. A little pressure here. Good. Good. And the, the benefit of teaching her leash pressure before we switch to anything around her neck. Good. Ask again. Good. Is that she already understands the kind of concept of the conversation. We're just changing where she's feeling the contact. Good. And this is also why I like to go ahead. Why I like to start with leash pressure. If I'm even if I'm going to add prong collar or an e-collar on top of our training. Good. I like to have a foundation of this. Good. Good. Add again. Good. Ask again. Good girl. Good. I like to have this foundation before we do anything else because we still have this leash pressure conversation to fall back on. You're really interested with what's around the corner, huh? Shorten up a little bit. Good. 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 Good, Good girl. Good job, a little bit more direction, good. This is a little bit more difficult. See if I can pull her over to, back to my left side. Good job. Ask, good, ask, good, ask. Get to the side, good girl. No, good, no, good, good. And all of this, I'm being very gentle with those little leash pops. But all of this is the same stimulation as we've been getting on the harness. Ask. Good. Good girl. Come in. Good. Okay, you want to smell? Good. And then we take a little break. Look over the full leash. Let her sniff around. Recharge a little bit, decompress from the pressure I just put on her. We've been walking about a block. Pressure. Good. Good job. Thank you. Good. And she's ready to go again. Yeah. Good girl. And things like yawning and uh, a little shake-offs are just her releasing stress, releasing tension because you're going to build up some tension with any type of training. Good girl. So that's a good sign that she's <sighs> kind of relaxing and shaking it off. Oh, and there's a person. Good girl. Good, good girl. Oh, goodness. Good job. Okay, let me toss straight. Movement, get her nose involved. That both of those help to relieve tension and get her more into curiosity. Good. And out of concern. Good, those dogs are not good at multitasking. Good, get it. 
that's with a dog that's sensitive like this. She would rather take a treat from the ground than from my hand. Good girl. So tossing a treat also makes it easier for her to access that reward. Good. Good. Good job. Good. Good. Ready? Good job. Shorten up a bit here. Good. Good. Let her sniff. Good. Again, I don't mind sniffing as long as she's not dragging me. If, you, if your dog can sniff without pulling on the leash, let him sniff. I don't care. Good. I just want my dogs to be able to prioritize. Uh, uh, good. Left a paw on that side. Good. I want my dogs to be able to prioritize the conversation with me over what's happening in the environment. And notice how I'm also not using any commands here. So she's sniffing. Good. As long as she's using her nose, I'm happy. Good. As long as she's not dragging me, I'm happy. Good. A little bit of pulling is to be expected right now. Because again, we switch tools. She's a little full of herself because it's the beginning of the walk. And there's some good distractions happening. But not using any commands. I'm just using my praise as a reward, as a marker, so she knows a reward is coming. And that's good enough to snap her attention back to me because it's like, oh, oh, you have something for me. It's worth paying attention to me for. So what I was saying was I'm not really using commands here yet. One reason is that they're not any command I would want to use is not strong enough right now to for her to be able to do it with the level of distraction that we're encountering right now. So I'm not going to do it if I know that she's not likely to be successful because I only want her to practice following through when she hears a command. I only want her to practice being successful. The other reason is, good, little yawn. I'll let her have the leaf so she can explore a little bit. The other reason I'm not using commands, is that I don't want to add that level of pressure right now. If I'm working on her reactivity, I can help guide her to making good choices. But for the most part, I want her to tell me what she wants to do, right? So if she sits and is sniffing, that's fine. That's, that's perfect. I would love for her to just sit and sniff and be curious about what's going on. If she's pulling, I hold the tension and I wait for her to make the proper decision, which is to yield to the leash pressure and turn the tension off. Uh, good. Uh, uh, good. Good. Don't care as much when we're crossing the road, just for a safety thing. If the road is empty, sometimes I'll work on it. Good. Come on. Good girl. Good girl. And even like a little leash pop like that, did you see what her response was? Good. Good. Good girl. So, oh, okay. Yeah. Beautiful. Nope. Good. Good. Come on. Come on. Good. Good. Can you see the leash? I just wanted to slow down right now. I want to burn off her energy. So that's my priority is work on this leash communication while burning off some of her excess energy. And then we'll really work on things when she's a little bit calmer and better able to focus. Good, we're getting a little closer to that. Every block. Ha! Good, come on, not proud. Go stand in the shade. Let's cross in the shade. Uh -uh. No one coming, so I'll look on this a little bit. Come on. Good 
girl. Good. Good. So I liked that turn when we were in the street. So I'm going to let her have more slack as a reward. We kind of sped up to get over here so that she can sniff as her reward for that behavior that I liked. So we might get a little closer to the dog park up there. We'll see. Good. So she's good. Good girl. If she can notice. My tangled. Come back. Good. So if she can stand here and notice another dog without making any movements towards her, that is a time that I will I will turn off the leash pressure to allow her good i will turn off the leash pressure to allow her to investigate that dog and be curious without any tension so that she it, it usually helps them stay a little bit calmer while they're investigating good and good because we've been using a lot of negative reinforcement turning off the tension means you're doing the right thing good Right? Turning on the tension means I'm talking to you. I don't want to talk to her if she's making good choices, right? I want her to be able to just make those choices and enjoy her life. Come back. Good. Good. So a couple pops there because she's pulling really hard. Good. Nope. Good. Get a little tired. She's almost ready to just be walking along next to us, but not quite. Good. And the reason I leave that off until a little bit later is that the more you control your dog's movement, the more pressure you are adding, right? The more pressure they are feeling from you and from the training. So if they're feeling a lot of pressure from the environment, and then you add a lot of pressure by trying to keep them close, you're more likely to have explosions and have your dog making less less conscious decisions and less desirable decisions because they're stressed. Good. So they'll try to relieve some of that tension that they feel by acting out however has worked. Barking, lunging, usually create space. Um, pulling over and sniffing helps them to relax. Good. Good. Okay. You want to sniff things? Dragging is not okay. Good. Come on. Good girl. Okay. But you can also tell that she doesn't really want to just stand and sniff all the time. Sometimes she's just trying to pull me over to sniff in order to pull. Sometimes she just kind of pulls over to sniff and it's almost like she's just stress pulling and expects, like it, it's just kind of a habit to drag along and sniff. Good, good. So my job is to slow her down and get her to think a little bit more instead of just doing her usual autopilot behavior. Good. Which is another reason why I like to, to start this way, is that starting with a long leash and getting your dog to make decisions, good, makes them think, makes them conscious of the choices that they make. Good. And helps them turn off the autopilot and start thinking about what they're doing. And that is a very, very helpful place to have your dog if you're trying to work on any behavioral issues.
digs in. Good job. Shorten up a little bit. Good. Good. Leash. Good. Dog's barking, so you can see her kind of start scanning and being uncomfortable and a little bit more uh, suspicious of her surroundings. Good. Speeds up, her, her little tail nub tucks a bit. Good, so we're gonna slow down. <sighs> Good job, that was a check-in. Concerned, see how she got closer. She's watching, her little tail nub is tucked. Her little butt's kind of tucked too. Ears are scanning. Eyes are scanning. She's sniffing. Good. Good. Concerned. Good job. Little tongue lick there too. Little flicks. That's also a stress signal. And sometimes they do that just because they've been panting. Good. There's someone in their garage. Very stressful. Good job. Good. So here. Good. 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 So something like that, where there are people on both sides of the street, I'm going to help minimize the pressure by asking for a little bit less. Good. So here, I'm just going to ask if she stops when she hits the end of the leash. Good. And we'll move away. Oh, person. Good. Get a treat ready. Good. Good job. Oh, is that concerning? Yes. Tackles. <laughs> Halloween decorations are scary. Can I cross the street? Come in. Very gentle. Good. Good job. Giving her a way out. And then I'm not going to do anything here. I'm going to give her the full leash. Good. 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 Good job. All right. So if she's not checking in with me, she's not ready for a treat. See your little butt's tucked. Okay. <sighs> and relax. There's somebody in this garage right here next to us. So we're going to get her to calm down a little bit. And then we're going to move. Good. So we're moving. Neat. I'm still just asking her to stop when she hits the end of the leash. Nothing very difficult because she's like panicky trying to get the heck out of here because there were like five people on their driveways just now behind us good so we're gonna use this driveway for a minute come here good girl come in come in good good she's trying good i want to get the heck out of here guys shorten up good Good. So another thing good about, quick note about the leash length, is that you have to balance the need for guidance with the amount of pressure that she feels. So sometimes getting closer to her means that you're better able to guide her, which will remove some of the pressure she feels from the environment. But having a shorter leash, come on, adds more pressure because of the training. Good. We're going to go down this way. If she wants to sniff here to, to decompress, I will let her. Full leash. Good. Concerned. Good. Look at that paw. Good. And she's tipping one of those ears back to me, too, so she can keep track of me. <sighs> Good girl. Come down to her side. Get a better view of her face. A little better. Good job. And honestly, sometimes just audibly sighing will help your dog relax a little bit. Good, she's kind of using her nose. Yep. Okay, I think we're ready. Let's 
and it loose. Not too bad though. Good. I'm gonna shorten up a bit. Good. Nope. Good. I'm really glad I switched back to the harness for the street because that's a lot of people. Good. Good. I'm not gonna work on that right now, the crossing over in front of me. We will work on that later. Right now she always has enough slack that she doesn't have to be right under my feet. And I like to crisscross kind of back and forth behind her. I'm gonna allow that for now. Good girl. Good girl. Good. 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 So things like this where you, if you just stop and sit in the same place or stand in the same place for five minutes during your walk, that's still training, it's still productive. You're still helping your dog relax and get used to their environment. Okay. Might move to the shade because it's a little toasty now. Good, concern. <coughs> I wonder if there's a dog right there in the street because there was a naked dog walking around. What? See how concerned she is? Run across the street, make it easy for her. Good, come in. A little bit more slack so I'm not pulling on her if she's trying to be good. Paw, good. Watch her paw, good. Come in. Concern. And then she's gonna try to rush past this so she doesn't have to deal with it or be near this dog that's barking at us for very long. That's all okay. I'm just gonna help her through it and say, mm, you can't drag me. We're gonna move faster if you don't pull my leash. And again, going back to just stop when you hit the end of the leash. We won't ask her to come back. We can always clean that up in a minute. Good, good. Turn it off because she's using her nose and she stopped. Stops. Good. Ah. Uh, good. Ah. Uh, good. Nope. Good. To the side. Good. Good. To the side. Good. Good. Good, so I'm gonna use both my hands here. All right, so we're about to walk away. I needed both my hands to, to work on her a little bit and to jog so we could get out of the space. Good, and she had a little bit of a shake off about a minute ago. Good, good. So now that we're far enough away, we can kind of work on this. She's still trying to drag me away from that street because she was that was very intense for her. We're gonna go back and forth here. It's a little bit easier. There's something for her to smell. That was a nice way to ask, so I'm gonna give her a break. Good girl. You yeah, someone's peed there recently, huh? Good. Come back this way. And again, I don't really care what side she's on. She doesn't really seem to have much of a preference. Good. Come on. She doesn't want to go back this direction. So. I kind of just want to be in the shade. Do a couple of little tiny back and forths here. Oh no! Look across the street, look away. Good. 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 Come in. Good job. Good. Good. Another thing to remember is if your dog is barking or lunging at people or other dogs, they're trying to create space, right? They're trying to get that other thing 
to go away. Sometimes noticing their discomfort and moving them away from the thing will be enough that they'll stop reacting that way. Sometimes. At the very least, it will help because you're telling them, cool, if you're uncomfortable, let me know and we'll move away. I will help you create space in a way that's not barking and lunging. I'll help you create space in a way that's far more effective than just barking or lunging. Right? Also teaches them that moving away from uncomfortable pressure is always an option, which translates to people coming into your house. She gets uncomfortable. She knows now that she can move away. You have to practice it in that context as well, but practice it everywhere. So your dog learns to generalize and that'll help a lot with just them being able to make better choices on their own. Good, good. Good. Good, I know you're done. Alrighty. Did a little bit of very relaxed walking. I don't mind if she's ahead of me if she's not pulling. <clears throat> Especially at the end of the walk, she's kind of, <clears throat> she's losing her attention span, right? We're using up the energy that she has available for mental work. So she's tired. She just doesn't have the capacity to do the same level of mental work that she did at the beginning of the walk. Right? There's usually a kind of a sweet spot in the middle there where you kind of burn off the excess energy for the first five or ten minutes. You have really good work for another five or ten minutes and then they're done and you kind of just have to good. you kind of just have to help them manage their emotional responses to what's going on in the environment it's also why i recommend keeping your walks really short when you're teaching a new skill or a new conversation like leash pressure because you're less likely to hit that last period where your dog is done and they just start to get frustrated and cranky because they're tired, right? They're tired physically and mentally and they don't want to do the exercise anymore. Kind of like a little kid when they miss their nap. Good people right here. Good. 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 And if I need to, I can always shorten up my leash and get up right next to her help her navigate people if she gets too uncomfortable. But for right now, because we're at the end of the walk, because she's mentally exhausted, I'm gonna let her walk ahead of me as long as she's not pulling. If she pulls, we're just gonna stop. I'm gonna ask her to stop pulling. Good. And we can keep going. And this is also a great way to get from point A to point B. Like if you're done, or if you're really trying to move away from something that's stressful, you don't want them dragging you. Good. But you can ask them to just stop when they pull. Good. When you feel the leash tension, stop and then we'll keep moving. As opposed to asking them to come back to you every time. It's a great way to minimize the amount of pressure that they feel from training or from you when you're trying to control their movements. Makes it easy to move a lot faster. Good. Mm -mm. Good. And there I'm just kind of checking what her understanding is. Is her understanding that as soon as the pressure comes off, we move? Good. Which it is. Good. So instead, I want her to be able to stand on a loose leash before we move forward. Good. That's all right. That little turn to the side is like a half check-in, half... Should I sniff while we're waiting? <laughs> type of question. Good. Good. If she wants to sniff, she absolutely can. Same rules. Good. See? Now she's not immediately moving again. 